Macho Man Randy Savage's departure from the WWF has been the thing of rumour and speculation even years after Randy's death in 2011. In a fandom where sometimes rumours can become canon and people like to believe in sensationalism, many still believe that Randy left due to a relationship with a certain member of the McMahon family. While the Macho Man never left us with any kind of autobiography, he did give interviews to the likes of E! Entertainment and IGN where he explained that he didn't see himself fitting into the WWF's new generation movement and he also didn't see himself behind the WWF commentary desk for the remainder of his career. Whatever the reasons for Savage's departure from the WWF, it's irrelevant and speculation and rumours don't really get us anywhere. All we need to know is Savage left the WWF in 1994. When Savage did leave the WWF, Vince McMahon, uncharacteristically, wished Savage all the best in the future and gave him the best of luck. A verbal handshake and personal goodbye from Vince McMahon on WWF Raw is nothing to scoff at. It was also reported afterwards on WWE licensed documentaries and interviews that Vince McMahon was hurt that Savage left the company. It probably hurt McMahon's pockets also as Macho Man took his Slim Jim endorsements with him. If we look at what Randy Savage said in these interviews regarding feeling out of place in the WWF's new generation, it becomes apparent that Savage wanted to remain a big player in the pro wrestling landscape in late 94. You also can't overlook the fact that money likely played a huge part in bringing Savage to WCW, seeing as the Ted Turner checkbook was wide open during this time period and beyond. Many look at Hulk Hogan's departure from the World Wrestling Federation as the biggest blow WCW ever delivered to the WWF, but I think losing Randy Savage, a man many considered to be a better worker and better entertainer, was equally as devastating. Nonetheless, Randy Savage made his WCW debut mere weeks after Vince McMahon's farewell speech on Monday Night Raw and Randy was prepared to step back into the ring and become a main event player once again. This video looks at the WCW career of Macho Man Randy Savage. Randy made his WCW debut on the December 3rd, 94 episode of WCW Saturday Night. During an interview segment with the great Mean Gene Okerlund, Savage told the world that he was in WCW to confront the man who goes by the name of Hulk Hogan, stating that he wanted to be the WCW World Heavyweight Champion. It would take Savage close to a year before winning his first WCW title, but more on that later. Savage would end up saving Hulk Hogan from the Three Faces of Fear at Starcade 94, seemingly forgetting the statements made during his debut and thus entering into a new feud with the Three Faces. At Super Brawl 5, Savage teamed up with Sting to take on Avalanche and Big Bubba Rogers in a tag match, which Sting and Savage won. Savage then went on to Uncensored 95 to take on Avalanche in a singles match, but he was attacked by a female fan during this bout. It turned out that this female fan was none other than the nature boy Ric Flair in drag. It appeared that we would be reliving the old Savage vs Flair feud from the WWF as we went into Slamboree. In the tag main event, Hogan and Savage defeated Ric Flair and Vader. As it would turn out, Ric Flair and Randy Savage would continue their feud until the arrival of the NWO. No complaints here, as I personally believe that this feud was the best thing that WCW had going on during 95 and early 1996. The Macho Man achieved a goal in November of 95. In the inaugural World War III event, the Macho Man won the WCW Championship in the 60-man World War match. The following month at Starcade, however, he dropped the title to Ric Flair. In January, Miss Elizabeth would be back at Randy's side as he defeated Ric Flair in a rematch on Nitro, but at Super Brawl 6, Flair once again defeated Savage for the championship in a match that also saw Miss Elizabeth turn on Randy Savage. The Macho Man and Ric Flair seemed destined to feud through 1996, that is until the landscape of WCW changed with the arrival of the Outsiders, who threatened to take over the entire company. The Flair and Savage feud was put on hold 
while Savage teamed up with Sting and Lex Luger to take on the Outsiders and the third mystery man. We all know what happened here at Bash at the Beach 1996. The NWO was born when Hogan turned his back on WCW. Savage became one of the NWO's biggest enemies as he threatened to take down Hogan for months but he always ended up on the receiving end of an NWO beatdown. At Halloween Havoc 1996, Savage got his opportunity to face Hogan for the WCW Championship but the match ended when the Giant interfered and hit him with a choke slam. Following Halloween Havoc, Savage left WCW as he was unable to reach a new deal with the organisation. Things got smoothed over though and Savage returned to WCW in January of 97, seemingly as an ally to Sting in his crusade against the New World Order, but it didn't take long for the Macho Man to join the monstrous heel faction. As a member of the original NWO, Savage had another highly entertaining feud, this time with Diamond Dallas Page. DDP credits Randy Savage for helping him break through on WCW and their matches at Spring Stampede, The Great American Bash and Halloween Havoc were all very very good. For more information regarding these matches, check out my DDP WCW video. After the feud with Diamond Dallas Page ended, Savage set his sights on the WCW title, something his stablemate and NWO leader Hulk Hogan wasn't very happy about. Hogan believed that he should be the only member of the New World Order to hold the WCW Championship, while Savage thought otherwise. This would lead to Hogan attempting to sabotage Savage's title opportunity at Spring Stampede 98, but it didn't work and Savage was crowned the WCW Champion once again. The NWO infighting here would lead to the creation of the NWO Wolfpack, where Macho Man and Kevin Nash broke away from the main black and white NWO to create their own New World Order group. Savage mainly feuded with Bret Hart and Roddy Piper. In mid-1998, Savage was forced to take time away from the ring to recover from knee surgeries. He did show up on the December 28th, 1998 episode of Nitro, where he assisted old rival Ric Flair in defeating Eric Bischoff, subsequently removing the NWO shirt he was wearing when he came to the ring. When Savage came back to work in April of 99, he debuted a new look and looked totally jacked. He also brought along with him his new girlfriend, Gorgeous George, to ringside. Eventually, Medusa and Miss Madness, better known to wrestling fans as Molly Holly, would join Savage and Gorgeous George to form Team Madness. Team Madness were booked as heels, as the women of the group would frequently interfere in Randy's matches, helping him to secure wins. Savage won his fourth and final WCW Championship at Bash at the Beach 99 during a tag match, where whoever scored the winning fall would be crowned champion. The match saw Savage team up with Sid Vicious to take on Kevin Nash and Sting. The title reign didn't last long however, as the returning Hulk Hogan took the belt from Savage on the following edition of Monday Night Raw. Shortly after this, Team Madness started to slowly disband and Savage entered into a feud with Dennis Rodman, culminating in a match at Road Wild, which the Macho Man won. This was Savage's final WCW pay-per-view appearance. Savage disappeared from WCW television shows after the Dennis Rodman feud. He made an appearance on the October 25th, 99 edition of Monday Nitro, where he said, Vince Russo and all you vultures in the back that are hoping I make an ass out of myself, it's not gonna happen, not today, not ever. Here's the deal, I've won world titles in both the WWF and WCW. I say, tonight it's time the Macho Man passes the torch, and I'll pass the torch to the man who goes into the millennium and is better than I was. We never really found out who the Macho Man was referring to here, as he once again disappeared from TV screens. In his final WCW appearance, Savage joined the Millionaires Club on the May 3rd, 2000 episode of WCW Thunder, helping the team of veterans as they faced the New Blood faction. It looked like Savage was going to be part of the Millionaires Club going forward, but this was his final WCW appearance, and the company folded the very next year.
So was the Macho Man's run in WCW a success? I would say yes it was. The man won the WCW title four times so it's hard to argue that he didn't have a good run with the company. What I remember most fondly is Macho Man's time as a member of the New World Order. I thought it was awesome seeing Savage work once again as a heel with the NWO spin put onto his ring attire. These days if I'm playing a wrestling video game and if I have the choice I always select Macho Man in his NWO gear. Blasphemy I know but I really liked it. The DDP feud and the Ric Flair feud were also extremely good. People do remember his work against Paige but many forget about the matches he had against Flair and who could blame them? It's not like 1995 was the most successful year in terms of wrestling viewership but you can find some quality matches here if you care to dig in.